Hey guys, Ivan here and in this video we got some really interesting bodybuilding updates and we are starting with this one, it's Nick Walker at 12 weeks out of New York Pro and this is what he looks like. At this point we are also one week out of Arnold Classic and this is gonna be the first time that I am reviewing a Nick Walker's physique update and I'm saying that he wouldn't make it to the Arnold Classic, this is the first time, one week out. In all of his previous physique updates at like 3 weeks out, 4 weeks out, I was still saying if he really wanted to, he could squeeze out the conditioning and still manage to do the Arnold Classic and do well, but at this point, at one week out, I can say no, no. But he's very close, you know, he's not that far off. Like with this conditioning, if you really sped things up, if you really tried super hard, I could see him get stage ready in 3-4 weeks, what do you guys think? I mean, based on his uh, quad separation and like the thinness of the skin and just overall body fat percent, yeah, I think three to four weeks would be enough. And I'm talking about Nick's standard. I am not talking Hassan Mustafa conditioning. He's already basically in that kind of conditioning. I'm saying Nick's level of shreddedness in three or four weeks. But no, no, Nick is gonna take his time, he's gonna do a show in 12 weeks, New York Pro, so all I'm saying is, he's in a really good spot right now, he doesn't need to work on his conditioning too aggressively, which means he's probably gonna still progress, he's probably still gonna grow into the show and get bigger and better, and I know how crazy it sounds to say that this guy can still grow, especially when he's prepping, but I mean, his physique, like, size-wise, is pretty much maxed out, like, there isn't a lot of room to put any more muscle on, but what he can grow is, like, new details, you know, if he shows a few more muscle fibers in certain areas, it's gonna create an illusion of a bigger, better bodybuilder, so once again, in 12 weeks from now, after he starts adding things into the equation that add, you know, more maturity, more fullness, more hardness, this guy is gonna look absolutely insane on that stage, he's just gonna destroy everybody, really. Now, what is also very interesting about this physique update, it's that he took this photo, this physique update, on the, let's say, the original spot, because he is right now back home in New Jersey, he's with his family, with his parents at their house, and this is where he takes the photos when he's over there, I think this is his basement, uh, I remember him talking on podcasts how his mom is taking his photos uh, in the morning, but yeah, this is the old spot, and I don't know for how long are you guys following Nick, but I decided to make a little comparison to show you how much progress he actually made in the past 5 years, because I found a photo from this exact spot from 5 years ago, the same lighting, same background and everything, so here you go guys, let's check this out, let's analyze it, and I don't know about the ratio, I probably messed that up, but yeah, you can get the idea, like comparing his head to the rest of his body, so the biggest difference I believe are the legs, you know, the legs were always his weak point, they were a weak point back then, and they still are now, kind of, because his upper body is so massive, but they are definitely much better. I think he changed his posing too, and also it looks different when he's wearing the trunks instead of wearing these boxers, but still, you can't deny that the outer sweep is bigger now, I mean, everything is bigger, the adductors, the vest medialis, everything is just popping out more, there is definitely more mass in those legs, now, as far as the abs, his abs seems to have looked better back then, but I think it's only the way he's hitting the pose. Before he was crunching more, and now he's pushing the chest outwards more, and I like the new way better, because it just makes him look wider, more 3D, more bubbly, you know, and yeah, the abs maybe suffer a little bit, but it's worth it, if you ask me. Also, there is another big change, big improvement, and that would be his chest. His chest definitely grew a lot, I mean, check it out, compare these two pics, like, the difference is big. His chest was one of his biggest weaknesses back then, and are they still today? No. No, I just have to say no, I mean, he improved them so much that they're no longer a weak point. Even though his shoulders and arms are massive, they're still not making his chest look smaller. So his chest grew a lot, he definitely improved it a lot, you can see it here in the comparison, also back then his back was kind of a weak point for him, but we don't get to compare that right now, I'm sure there's gonna be a back update soon, but right now you can see the chest difference, and also I think his arms grew as well, I mean everything grew really, but I think his biceps are just more peaky now, right? 
the triceps are also popping more and shoulders are bigger but i mean you can just <laughs> pretty much say everything is better which is exactly what i did literally everything is better but i think the biggest improvements are in his quads and in his chest at least that's what we can see from the front maybe his back came up a lot we're gonna see that soon but this is it for now 12 weeks out of new york pro nick walker looks insane what do you guys think tell me down below all right, next up, we got another physique update, very, very interesting one. It's from Carlos Thomas Jr. And this physique update wasn't posted by him personally, but by this Instagram page. So he sent this to them and uh, they are saying here that he is 50 days uh, out from his first show of the year. 50 days, that's seven weeks. Uh, is his condition looking good for seven weeks out? I would argue that Nick Walker's conditioning is looking better at 12 weeks out but like i said nick could get shredded in three to four weeks so i believe carlos could do it in seven weeks if he knows what he's doing if he's able to push a little bit harder to dig a little bit deeper in seven weeks he could be shredded but based on his previous track record i don't really have high hopes from this guy in terms of conditioning i don't think i can see this guy getting super shredded uh, in seven weeks from now now you're probably wondering which show it is in seven weeks from now it is the detroit pro so it's it's a very interesting choice but detroit pro is really shaping up to be an awesome show and the prize money is 25k so it's bigger than most shows as for right now we know martin fitzwater is doing it john de la rosa also justin rodriguez muhammad shaman and a couple of other pretty good guys so i don't know if carlos thomas can actually win here my favorite would be john de la rosa but we'll know for sure if that's the case after the annual classic maybe muhammad chaban beats john or if justin rodriguez does that i mean i don't know but as of right now john de la rosa is probably my favorite we'll see how he's gonna do at the annual classic maybe he loses against muhammad chaban justin rodriguez but basically he is proven at this point he is very good he made a lot of progress in the off season and he's bringing good conditioning he's very complete very round very big you know for his height he's very heavy so yeah i think this guy is gonna do the best at the annual classic and then he probably will win the detroit pro unless somebody better shows up now as far as carlos thomas jr is he really like a threat to win this show well let's take a look at his physique now the size of this guy's legs and arms is just ridiculous it's one of the freakiest physiques in today's bodybuilding i mean for sure in terms of size of certain body parts his chest is also pretty thick a little bit too separate in the middle i don't like that but also very massive now as far as conditioning at this point you know it's not great and for him who has never been in shape it should be probably better at this point seven weeks out so i'm not really happy with that too much also the other thing is his back it's really a weak point for him and it's still looking pretty weak is it improved i don't know i mean i don't know maybe a little but it's not like he has a new back i mean back is a kind of a muscle that you need to wait to be shredded to see how much progress you actually made because a lot of guys are holding a lot of water and fat in that area and he definitely is one of those guys so i don't know maybe he made progress i'm sure he did make some progress but did he made enough progress to not lose this pose actually those two poses against literally everybody in the lineup i don't know about that but like would i bet on him to win detroit pro no no again john de la rosa martin fitzwater justin rodriguez mohammed shaban i have all of these guys ahead of carlos thomas even though i'm super impressed with his physique in terms of like freakiness of some body parts like quads like like uh, arms i mean check this out like this is insane definitely a lot of freaky body parts definitely a freaky bodybuilder but i mean all of these guys in the top are freaky they're all massive so at that level conditioning is what makes the difference and do i think he's gonna match the other guys with conditioning do i think he's gonna bring something new something next level i wouldn't bet on it because i haven't seen it so far when he won the nationals and earned his pro card he wasn't in shape he won because of the freaky size when he did the texas pro and placed third also he wasn't in good condition he placed third based on his freakiness there's just so much freaking muscle on this short and small frame it's ridiculous it's insane you know he, he passed the point where you would say he can't pack more muscle 
he's past that point, this is just, this is abnormal. So because of that, I'm really impressed by this guy, he has really freaky Instagram photos, but as far as him winning the Detroit Pro, he can only do that if he comes in shredded. Will he come in shredded? I don't know. You guys tell me, what do you think? Imagine if Carlos, with all of his size, came in in this kind of conditioning, like Michael the Bull at one week out of Arnold Classic. That would be really awesome, but it's probably not gonna happen. Anyways, the next physique update is Michael the Bull at one week out. He just posted this photo and this is looking insane. I mean, the level of detail, the level of dryness and hardness of this guy is just crazy. And that's one week out. He can still dry out during the peak week and come in even more shredded. Now, this guy is one of the classic guys who has been showing a lot of physique updates. And in my opinion, he's... One of the, let's say, top five guys. If you say Ramon Dino and Urs are top two, then you have Brian, and then I could say we probably have Wesley Wissers and Michael the Bull uh, rounding up the top five, potentially. I don't know, maybe there are other guys who I forgot about or who are not very popular, but they're very good. Uh, however, I think these five guys are standing out in this Arnold Classic. And Michael the Bull, I don't know, man, he's an inspiration for me because he's not exactly super genetically blessed in terms of shape. Like, he doesn't have, you know, biceps shaped like Wesley Wissers or chest. He doesn't have super small waist and beautiful classic shape like Ramon Dino or insane freaking legs like Urs Kaletsinski. He has, like, you know, average looking genetics, you know, in terms of shape. But he has a lot of muscle and he comes in grainy. Like, he can come in super hard and shredded. Maybe that's partly genetic. Maybe he's just a hard, hard worker. I don't know. But he brings that. And that's why he stands out and does pretty well. And that's why I think he's going to be at the top of the Arnold Classic because we know. He's gonna be peeled. He's gonna be peeled hard as a rock, detailed everywhere. So it's gonna be hard to beat this guy, no matter who you are. And I think he's gonna beat Wesley Wissers. I think he has a better structure than Wesley, you know, in terms of like blockiness. You know, he's not blocky. Like maybe he's not super shapely like Urs or Ramon, but you know, he's he's not blocky at all. Like he's just okay in terms of structure, but he has so much detail. His conditioning is on an insane level. And maybe you could say that he does kind of have a standout body part, which would be his chest. This is a physique update from one week ago. He's definitely drier now, but here also he was really conditioned, really full too, right? Like he was really round. So I'm guessing once he carbs up during this peak week, he's gonna just get fuller, rounder, freakier. Because look at this, I mean, this is really looking insane, this is freaky. What is a shame is that there is no most muscular or lat spread in the classic physique. The most important pose, one of the most important poses would be front double bicep. And here is what his looks like. Obviously, the lighting here is not uh, as good as the other two photos. And this is just, you know, day lighting next to a window. So it's not really, you know, making his physique uh, exaggerated. But we can get a pretty good idea of what he's bringing. And like, yeah, the conditioning is going to be spot on. I have no doubt about that. Here, he looks really flat. He's going to carb up. He's going to get fuller, but not much fuller. He is not exactly the guy that pops up too much. Because I think he needs to suffer down to make the weight for classic. Uh, also, like I said... Not exactly the best structure, not the craziest wheat taper. This is not Urs Kaletsinski or Sibam wheat taper, but it's pretty good. If he cracks, let's say, top three, which is not impossible, if he beats Brion Ainsley, which I could see happen, it's most likely not gonna happen, but it's a possibility. That would be like a huge success for this guy. I would love to see that happen, honestly. I like him. I like him more than Brian Ainsley, to be honest. But I think it's more likely for Brian to end up in that top three. But top four at the Arnold Classic for Michael the Bull would be also really awesome. Or also, by simply being the most shredded guy on that stage, he would stand out quite a bit. That would also be awesome to see. What do you guys think about his conditioning right now? And whatever your thoughts are about Nick Walker, about Carlos Thomas Jr., whatever you think, guys, please, down below in the comment section, tell me about it. Make sure to like this video and to subscribe to this channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.